Hello all, my name is Abdurrahma and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today in this video we are going to talk about big notations like what it is, how it works. Yeah, we have talked about already in the last video but in this video we are also talk about that again and we are also going to work with the example of a python program we are going to implement this with a python program so first of all guys i wanted to talk about why i have got the topic of big notations as i said that in the last video that the while finding the time taken by an algorithm or finding the time complexity we need the big notations right so that's why i bought the topic of big notations now first of all let's talk about what is big o notations okay if i talk about big o notation in a simple words then big o notation is a way of describing the efficiency of an algorithm or a function it's a mathematical notation used to represent the worst case scenario of an algorithm in the terms of the time complexity now it's going to show us the worst case scenario but so there are a lot of terms such as time complexity space complexity etc but here it's going to show the worst case scenario just in the terms of the time complexity or how much time it takes for the algorithm to complete as the size of the input grows right in the simple terms then big notation tells us how fast an algorithm grows grows relative to the size of the input data right it's often used to compare the different algorithms and use the most efficient one for a particular problem. Now, as I have given the example of a man who helps you to count the numbers in an array, right? So, if you didn't watch my last video of data structures and algorithms series, then please go there and watch that video and then check out this video because in that video, I have explained the big notations in very detail with examples. Now, for example, an algorithm with a time complexity of order of 1, okay, for example, we have a time complexity, okay. Now, for example, an algorithm with a time complexity of order of 1 takes a constant amount of time to complete regardless of the size of the input data, right. An algorithm with a time complexity of order of n takes the time proportional to the size of the input data to incomplete, to complete. Right now here we have talked about the order of 1 and order of n. Now how would you how would you make the order of n right how do you build that. Now we have a question what is order of n I am going to explain that first of all. Now guys the, the reason that we use the order of n in data structures or algorithms or in the big notations is that now for example I wanted to explain this with an example okay. For example, let's say that we have a Python program which is going to define a Python program which defines an array or which defines a function. So, for example, let's create a variable let's such as test. Okay, this is going to be such as test. So, the function name is test. Now, in the brackets, I'm going to give it as an array. Array, or I should give the array. Okay, now we have this one. Now, what is the time taken? Now, here with the function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the value of 100. I'm going to give the input data 100. It's going to be 100. Okay. Now, here, how much time it's going to take for finding the time complexity for big notations, right? So, it may take any time. So, it's depending on our computer. Now, here, I don't know the estimate of my computer also, but here I'm going to just take it as the 0. 30 something around that 0 0.30 i can give here but here we have used that now here if i increase the value of this test this function add to the 100 one sorry if i increase the value to 1000 then what would be the time it's going to change right so it's depending on the time it's depending on your computer how fast it is or whether it is slow or whether it is fast your computer might be fast or slow so it's depending on your computer so it's going to the time is going to take so here we have the 1000 so it might take for me around three seconds right three seconds or it might take around two 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 point five zero seconds any time it would take to me let's give it as two point five zero seconds seconds here also 
seconds. Okay, now it might take, but here what should we do? Now, for example, I have a laptop now. I, I know that how much time it's going to take for my laptop if I know. Okay, but here if your computer is there, so there will be a lot of computers. If I go in some other computer, whether it's slow, whether it's fast, I can't find out that, right? So for that, we are going to use here a mathematical. Okay, so here we are going to use a mathematical formula known as time. Okay, so the time is going to be sorry time is equal to a into n plus p a into n plus b so this is not x this is the multiplication symbol rate i'm going to keep it as this star i'm going to keep it as this star okay so this is time complexity this is not multiplication symbol this is this is the not x this is the multiplication symbol so here we have a into n plus b so we can find so this is the formula that we are going to use the reason that we are going to use here the time complex this formula is because like as i said you a lot of people will be having different types of computers whether they will be fast or whether they will be slow so here that's why we are going to use this so this formula this is that's why we are going to call the order of n the big four notations right so here on the base of this formula we are going to call that's why we order of n this is also called as the notation so we will be talking about the big o theta or that kind of stuff later on so here we have this one now i'm going to explain this with another example okay now guys as you can see here on the screen that here we have a simple python program which demonstrates the concept of big o notations so from that time I explained about the order of n like voids used and as I said to that I am going to explain the big O notations with a simple example in this video. So here this is what the example. So this program is going to calculate the sum of first 10 first n number of natural numbers. Why I have given n number of natural numbers is that so numbers can be any, any number right. So natural numbers and whole numbers there is a big difference is that because whole numbers are going to start from the zero whereas natural numbers are going to start from one so that's the difference between that so it's going to calculate the sum of first n natural numbers so n refers to the, the number that we are going to give here now this function calculates the sum of the first n natural numbers using a for loop we can analyze the time complexity of this algorithm using the big O notation right now the for loop iterates the for loop iterates over the range from 1 to n plus 1. Now here we have created, we have defined a function known as sum of n, which is n. And here we have given sum is equal to 0. So these two are different. If I show you here, this sum of n and this sum, is, both of them are different because this is the variable as sum is equal to 0, where we have the sum underscore of underscore n. So these things are different, it should not be confused. Now. The for loop iterates from over the range from 1 to n plus 1. So n plus 1 can be anything. Now for example, n can be what 10, I can say. So 10 plus 1 is going to be equal to 11. Uh, 11 plus equal to. So the value of n is going to change every time, each and every time, right? So that's what the for loop. And the reason that I have used here the for loop, right? So the reason that I have used here for loop is for iterating. Now I can just give from 1 to n plus 1, can give, but what is the use? For example, let's say the value of n is 10 and we are going to add 10 plus 1 is going to be 11, right? So the value of n is going to be 11. What is the use of it? Every time we have to change its value. For example, we have the 11, then we have to give 11 plus 1. So each and every time the value should change. That's why here we have used here the for loop, okay? Now here. Now, which means that it, it's going to run a number of times. Therefore, the time complexity of this algorithm is going to be the order of order of n, right? Now here, now when the algorithm is going to be order of n, which means the running time grows linearly with the size of the input data. So whenever, now here why we use the order of n in the data structures and algorithms? Because whenever the data changes, whenever the value changes, it should have to grow, right? So the, so the output should also be grown. But here, 
what happens is we can't just see that order of just one so this is just its order no we can't see that because each and every time the order is increasing which means the running time grows linearly with the size of the input data now in other words if we increase the value of n the running time of the execution will increase proportionally for example as i have given the example right from 100 to 1000 it can change right now if i say that for example if n is going to be equal to 100 and is going to be equal to 100 the function will run 100 times and if n is going to be equal to 1000 times then the function will run 1000 times the time complexity of this algorithm will be the same which is going to be order of n okay that's why we give as order of n we can't just state that order of 1 order of 2 anything like that just order of n Keep in mind that big notation only describes the worst case scenario of an algorithm. In the in this case, the worst case scenario is n when n is very large and the loop runs many times because whenever the loop runs, then n is going to the value of n is going to change. So this is how we are going to define the big notations uh, as I have explained the big notations with this simple program. Now understanding according to me, understanding big notations is Pretty much difficult to me for you also it may be but here if i learn this in the simple words then it's pretty much simple so this is all for this video and thank you for watching this video and again don't forget to like share and subscribe my video i will see you all in another tutorial thank you for watching and goodbye